In this video I'll be showing you how to change your master cylinder on these older Ford trucks. This is pretty straightforward so let's jump right in. The first thing you want to do is remove as much fluid out of the reservoir as possible. The last thing you want to do is spill any fluid anywhere since this will eat right through your paint. So grab a turkey baster or something else to extract the fluid out of the container. Looking at the master cylinder you will notice two brake lines on the left side and also a few bolts that mount it to the brake booster in the back as well as two electrical connectors. First I'm going to remove the bolt to this bracket so I can free that brake line in the back. There are two bolts in this area, one that holds the bracket I just mentioned and the other to keep the master cylinder mounted to the brake booster. So grab your 9 16 wrench and remove the first bolt. Once that outer bolt is removed, you can remove the bracket. Pull the top of the bracket towards you first to get it off of the stud. Then just push it down to get it off the brake line. And try not to drop it like I just did. Here's what the bracket looks like. You can see the brake line rests in that little slot and the bolt clamps the bracket shut. Now we can work on the brake lines. Now there are two different size brake lines entering the master cylinder. This one is 5 8 Oh, and make sure you are using flare nut wrenches for these. A regular wrench will strip those bolts because it doesn't touch each side like a flare nut wrench does. Once that is removed, you can gently push it to the left. Don't push too hard if you're not replacing your brake lines. They can be extremely brittle due to their age, so just be careful. Now move on to the other line. This one is 7 16 If at any point you try to remove these lines and they don't budge, just spray it down with some penetrating fluid and let it set for about 15 minutes. Once those are out of the way, you can remove these electrical connectors. Just squeeze the sides of this connector and you should be able to pull it straight off. Now this one at the bottom is a little trickier. You need to grab a flathead screwdriver and enter from the other side. Twist the flathead and you should be able to pull the tab straight out. In order to prevent you from breaking this plastic clip, let's take a closer look at this connector. See, you put the flathead here, twist, and then pull. This should release the connector and prevent you from breaking that plastic piece. Once that is done, you can start removing the bolts that connect the master cylinder to the brake booster. There are three bolts total. We already moved one earlier that held that bracket into place. So now you have two left, one on each side. All bolts should be 9 16 in size. If you are having issues removing any of them, I would suggest getting a breaker bar or use a pipe like I am doing right here. Just slide the pipe over the wrench and then loosen the bolt. If the bolt still doesn't budge, get some penetrating fluid and spray it down thoroughly. Once that bolt is removed, you can move on to the other side. Now remove the other bolt and the master cylinder will be free. Then grab a bucket or container and dump the rest of the fluid out of the master cylinder. And try to actually get it inside of the container, unlike me. Now we are ready to compare the old unit to the new one. These look the same except for two pieces that need to be transferred over. Also, the new one should come with this o-ring. That's pretty important. I'll show you where this goes in a little bit. Let's get these two parts transferred over. The bolt at the bottom of this electrical connector is 9 16 Break that loose and remove it. This wasn't too hard to do off the truck. However, it would probably be easier to get these two parts off while the master cylinder was still attached to the brake booster. I just want to mention this to make it easier for all of you. Once that is removed, let's get that other piece off. For this one, I decided to use an adjustable wrench since I didn't have an open-ended wrench big enough. And yes, this worked just fine as you will see me break it free right here. Now, as you can see, there is the O-ring you need to replace. So roll the old one up and off. So grab the new o-ring and put a tiny bit of silicone paste around it. Of course, I didn't catch that part on camera, but you want to make sure you lube it up a little to prevent it from binding when reinstalling it to the new one. And don't worry if this plastic piece falls off, just put it back on. Once you get the new ring on the metal part, you can install the electrical connector on the new master cylinder. You are putting metal to metal, so give it some force when tightening. At this point, you need to bleed the master cylinder before installing it back on the truck. You are going to need some kind of device to keep the master cylinder secure and prevent it from moving around too much. A little movement is fine. You just don't want the master cylinder to tip over while you are bleeding. I bought this small workbench and will use this clamp to keep it in place. Here are the things you need to successfully bleed your master cylinder. The master cylinder Cylinder, obviously. A bleeding kit. As you can see, this has a lot of different fittings as well as a couple of tubes. More on that in a bit. And you will need brake fluid. My truck takes dot three. Once the master cylinder is secured, we can try different fittings for the brake line ports. You want the fittings to screw in with a little resistance and then require a wrench to make it snug. If you are able to screw the fitting in all the way by hand, that's most likely not the correct fitting. Once you find the correct size, use a wrench to slightly tighten it. This is going to be kind of tricky. These are plastic, so you don't want to over tighten them, but you don't want to have them too loose either. Just give it a few turns and then check with your fingers. If it moves around at all, you either have the wrong size or you need to tighten it a little bit more. Make sure both of the fittings are snug to prevent brake fluid from escaping, and then we can move on to the next step. Go ahead and remove the cap. 
Before adding fluid, there are three more things that you need to do. The first is grabbing these white plastic tabs. Now you may be asking where these go. These plastic pieces will sit on the top of your master cylinder where the cap typically is and will hold the tubes in place. When bleeding, those tubes will have pressure in them, which will make them naturally move around. You don't want that because if they move around too much, you could have air into the line. The second things you want to grab are, you guessed it, the clear tubes in the kit. Just push the tubes over the ends of the fittings at the bottom and then feed the other end into the white plastic tab at the top. These white tabs can be placed anywhere on top. You can see I am just in mine right here. Do the same with the other side and then we can move on. Now the last thing you want to do before adding brake fluid is adding protection. First, put on some gloves. And it's probably a good idea to put on some safety glasses even though I didn't. Then place a paper towel under the master cylinder like this. Not only will this help with cleaning up, but this will also allow you to spot a leak more easily. Once that's done, let's move on to adding brake fluid. Whenever you buy new brake fluid, you want to make sure the bottle has a seal like this and that it isn't broken. Brake fluid is very hydroscopic, so break that seal and start pouring fluid into your master cylinder. You don't want to fill the fluid to the top because the fluid will rise as you are pushing in the piston. Once the fluid is about right there, stop. If we look inside, we can already see air escaping the master cylinder. This means fluid is pushing the air out, which is exactly what we want. If air is in the system, you will have a squishy pedal or worse, you will lose the ability to stop. Also take note, you need both clear tubes to be submerged in brake fluid. This will prevent air from entering back into the master cylinder. Now in order to speed up the process, I'm going to use a punch like this to press the piston in. This will force fluid in while pushing air out of the master cylinder. As you are pushing in and out, you will notice the level of brake fluid in your reservoir beginning to go down. That's a good sign. That means fluid is replacing the air around the piston of the master cylinder. If you need to adjust the tubes again, do so before refilling. This may be the last time you need to do this. Now refill the master cylinder, but do not overfill. Around there should be good enough. I'll show you why. Watch as I push the piston in now. Do you see how high the fluid goes? Luckily I had it just enough or else the fluid would have overflowed and I would have had brake fluid leaking from the top. The fluid level will go down as I continue to compress the piston. This is going to take some time and patience. Make sure you periodically check around both of the fittings to make sure they aren't leaking and also make sure the tube stays submerged in brake fluid. If there is a leak or any of the tubes aren't submerged, you will let air back into the master cylinder and that kind of defeats the whole purpose of what we're doing. At this point, if you don't have any leaks around the two fittings, then you shouldn't have an issue with them. However, it's still a good idea to keep an eye on them, and you also need to keep checking those clear tubes and make sure they are submerged in the brake fluid. At this point, you should notice three things. One, the air in the tubes are getting smaller and smaller. Two, the fluid level isn't moving nearly as much as it was before. And three, the piston is getting harder and harder to push in compared to when you started. All three of these are good signs and means you are bleeding it correctly. All right, that should be good. Let's take a look at the tubes and make sure we are done. As you can see, there are very, very tiny bubbles still in both tubes, but there aren't very many of them, so this is okay with me. Once you are satisfied with how yours looks, you can install the master cylinder back on the vehicle. Now just push the master cylinder over the studs of the brake booster. Try not to pinch anything between the brake booster and the master cylinder like I did with this clear tube. I noticed this after I tightened down the bolts and tried to remove the tubes. It's not a big deal if this happens as you just need to loosen the bolts in order to free the tube. You will see me do this in a little bit. Let's get those bolts screwed on and tightened down. Again, these are 9 16 On this side, I could not fit a deep socket so I started the bolt with a regular socket. Eventually, you will need to find a way to get a deep socket in there or use an open-ended wrench. I eventually use a deep socket which you will see later. Once you have tightened down those bolts you can work on the brake lines. Start by placing a paper towel or some kind of container underneath the lines to catch any fluid that may leak out. Now grab your open-ended wrench to remove the fitting from the brake line port on the master cylinder. This one is half an inch. Start loosening the fitting then you should be able to remove the clear tube unless you pinched it like I did. Now let's loosen one of the bolts on the brake booster stud and get that tube out of the way. Then you can tighten the bolt and get back to the brake lines. These mounting bolts should be torqued down to 18 to 25 foot pounds of torque. Oh, and make sure you are only doing one brake line at a time. Do not remove both fittings and then let the fluid drip out while rushing to get the brake lines installed. You want to be able to start screwing the brake line into the master cylinder immediately after removing one of those fittings. Now with one hand, loosen the fitting and then get the brake line ready with the other hand. Once the fitting is off, immediately try to connect the brake line. This line went on pretty easy, 
but the other line was a little difficult, as you will see in a little bit. Grab your 7 16th flare nut wrench and tighten down the brake line. According to my online manual, you should tighten these brake lines down to 16 to 21 foot pounds of torque. That's tricky with the brake line since you can't get a socket over the end. So I'm just going to hand tighten these and use my own judgment. Once that's tightened down, move on to the other brake line. This is the same process as the other one. Once the fitting comes out, immediately grab the brake line and try to screw it into the master cylinder. This one gave me some trouble as you can see. But once you are able to get it seated properly, it should screw right in. Now grab your half inch flare nut wrench and tighten it. If you are reusing your factory brake lines, yours will be 5 8 This new brake line for my truck is 1 half. Grab a paper towel or just use the one underneath of the master cylinder if that's what you use to catch the brake fluid. Wipe down the brake line fittings that enter the master cylinder. This will help us spot a leak easier if we have one later on. Now just pull up the bleeder kit like this and place it into the paper towel. And put the cap back on the master cylinder. Let's tighten down those mounting bolts. As you can see, the space is pretty tight. I couldn't use a shallow socket because the stud the bolt mounts to is way too long. So I felt like I had to use a deep socket. However, I completely forgot I have this set of ratcheting wrenches. It has all the commonly used sizes and comes with a nice carrying case. That's what I should have used. Instead, I struggled to get this bolt on and risked stripping the nut. Luckily, the bolt went on and I avoided stripping it somehow. Once that's tightened down, you can install your brake line bracket. Make sure you put it around the brake line first before mounting it to the stud. Now you can grab the other bolt and screw it on and now I'm struggling again. Those ratcheting wrenches were just sitting in my computer room on a shelf waiting to be used, and I'd rather struggle. Moving on. Once that bolt is tight, check the orientation of the bracket. I did not like the way mine had turned clockwise. I felt it turned too much and may ruin the brake line at some point in the future. So I loosened the bolt again, and this time I tried to push the bracket back a little, so when the bolt started to tighten, it should bring the bracket forward a tad, just like that. See, the bracket is closer to being straight up and down as opposed to being too far towards the camera. Now, before you do anything else, check your brake lines you want to make sure they aren't rubbing up against anything, especially the steering shaft. There are a few gaps you can run them through, and yes, you can bend them where you want them, just don't go crazy with it. The last thing you want to do is bend too much and kink the line. These brake lines are pretty durable, but you still want to be careful. Now let's get those electrical connectors back in. This one is simple, just line it up and push down. The one on the bottom isn't as easy as you may think. You can't just push it back into the master cylinder and expect it to snap in. These new master cylinders have a couple of black connectors that came with the kit. You need to find out which one works with your vehicle. So grab both and see which fitting connects to the electrical harness. For my truck, this is the one I need. Once you figure that out, put the fitting into your master cylinder, keeping in mind which orientation it needs to be installed. Mine goes this way with the three exposed pins facing up. Once that snaps into place, you can push your connector on and that should be it. Your master cylinder is officially installed, but you're not finished yet. You now need to bleed the brakes. There are a few methods when it comes to bleeding brakes, one of which we have on our channel already. That's the two person brake bleeding method. But before I get into that, let me show you which order to bleed the brakes on these older F-150s. First, you wanna start with the passenger rear, then move on to the driver rear. Now you may think the front passenger is next, however, that's incorrect. Since we replaced a master cylinder, we also need to bleed the RABS module. RAB stands for rear, anti-lock braking system. It's a module that is located in the frame rail behind the front driver tire. This is what it looks like. As you can see, it has a bleeder screw right here. This needs to be bled before bleeding the front brake calipers. Once that is bled, you can move on to the passenger front and finally the driver front. That's the first pass. You will then need to bleed everything again, but this time you bypass the RABS module. So passenger rear, driver rear, passenger front, and finally driver front. Essentially, everything gets bled twice except for the RABS module. The process for bleeding brakes is very simple if you have another person to help you. If you are by yourself, you can still bleed your brakes. However, the process takes a little longer. Since Rob and I are bleeding the brakes, we will show you the two-person method. Once your bleeder valve cap is removed and you have the clear tube over the bleeder valve and the proper wrench on the bleeder screw, the person in the car will need to press the brakes. Once the brakes are pressed, the other person can turn the bleeder screw into the open position. Now, when the person in the car feels the brake pedal hit the floor, he or she will need to notify the person with the wrench to close the bleeder valve. The person should then close the bleeder valve and then the person in the car can lift off of the brake pedal. Repeat these steps until there aren't any more visible air bubbles in the clear tube. Proceed to the next caliper and repeat the process. That's all there is to it. If you found any part of this video helpful or entertaining, please give it a thumbs up. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that button as well as the notification bell so you don't miss a video from our channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.